Hey guys, Daniel Shaw here with Media Lodge, still out here at Media Day. I'm here with Steve Horseman, still with Springfield, and he's got a SOCOM 16 CQB. Yes, tell us a little bit about that CQB. The CQB, since we came out with the gun about 10 years ago, we've been trying to figure out a way to make it a little bit more, quote unquote, I guess, tactical for the, those guys that use like tactical term. And what we kind of came up with, we've been trying to search for a stock that we liked um, that wouldn't necessarily be kind of a GI type of military type stock or the old school M14 stock. So what we came up with was this stock here, we called it CQB, or uh, SOCOM CQB. Um, it's still our SOCOM top end. One of the things we did add to it was the sight, the optical sight on there. So it's optical sight ready. We are offering it with the optical sight, the Vortec optical sight that's on there. Other than that, it's pure SOCOM. Okay. With the exception of the stock and the red dot sight on there, it's true SOCOM. What's your plan with this? Right now you've got a Vortex Venom on there. Uh, what else can I do with this mount system you guys developed? It's, it's gonna be offered with the sight or without the sight. The mount's gonna come on it. Um, so you're able to mount any of the small little red dot sights on there. That was our goal, was to keep the thing small and compact. We didn't want to make it another deal where you had a big, you know, one to six or a big magnified scope on there. The whole idea was to keep it small, lightweight, and kind of an entry type of gun for a, for a police department, for example, that's looking for a rifle that's more than a 223556, but not a big, giant, heavy, you know, 22 inch perimeter rifle kind of sniper type of thing, you know, but still wants the power of the, the, the 308 cartridge. Very cool. Now, the stock here, you changed that quite a bit. You talked a little bit about it. The stock has been changed quite a bit. What we did was we, we went back and forth with this grip here, for example, to get the, the correct grip angle from the trigger. A lot of times you think, well, why is there a gap in the trigger guard and the grip? Well, part of that came from you know, getting a, a good uh, trigger finger move a reach from the grip. We put it too close, it brought the trigger finger in too, too tight on the trigger. So we pushed it back a little bit. We experimented with where that location was. Also, it's got an adjustable rear stock. Any of the aftermarket stocks that you guys have seen out there will fit, but we really like this one. A couple things else is that we've got some uh, Picatinny rails on here, okay, uh, for mount accessories, lights, lasers, whatever the case may be. It's also got integral sling swivel attachments, so your, your quick detachable sling swivel is going to attach to this and to the stock, or to the adjustable rear stock. But it's compatible with all the magazines that we make, the 10s, the 20s, you know, some of the 25 rounders that are out there. Um, one of the struggles we had was keeping this, this mount clear of the ejection you know and they we went back and forth back and forth with it um, and finally got it to the point where the thing ran reliably with that setup right there like it is and that just it essentially just goes in the old the old m14 buffs the stripper clip guy is where that where we mounted that, that in there right so. awesome thanks for showing us you got it appreciate it guys i'm daniel shaw here with media lodge out at media day thanks for watching stand by for more